My name is Michael Ladin. I am currently driving more than 220,000 miles around the world in my 1979 Mercedes Unimog and custom-built Overland Expedition trailer. This is my story. There are a number of critical components on board any Overland Expedition rig. And whether you're going out for the weekend, a week, or similar to me, where I live full-time in my Mercedes Unimog and Overland Expedition trailer, these components become very critical to your adventure, especially if you're spending time off the grid. So today we're gonna to talk about the water system. And for me, it's critically important to a number of things. One, drinking water. Two, showering, cleaning pots and pans, uh, you know, cooking. So there's a ton of things that the water comes into play in my system. And today I'm gonna to take you kind of through the entire process of where I store my water, how I can get it, uh, how it's filtered, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so right here behind me is kind of the, the critical component to the entire system. This is a stainless steel 82 gallon uh, water tank. Now, you'll notice that it's located on board the Mercedes Unimog and not on the trailer. And the reason for that is, uh, in my thought anyways, is the truck obviously is mobile. And in the event that I need to go fill the water tank up somewhere else outside of camp, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to take the trailer with me. I can simply take the truck and go get the water. So, uh, a couple things. 82 gallons of water is not light. And one of the things you have to do is factor how much water do you use and what's your rate of usage as you do something as such as taking a shower. And I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. But this is the tank and this is where it all starts. Now, you can see right here, there is a, a fill hole um, and that's where it gets filled. Now, there are a number of ways that I can get water. Basically, there's three ways. I can hook up to a tap. If I can find a tap on the road, whether it's uh, at the back of a restaurant, at somebody's private residence, uh, wherever that might be, put the hose in, turn it on, fill up the tank. The second means that I can fill is if I'm in a remote area and I'm nearby some kind of stream, river, or body of water, I can use a pump that I have on board to bring the water uh, into this tank. All right, so for that activity, we have a submersible pump here. Um, this is a, in my case, it's a 24 volt pump. And I've put, you can see I've got about 100 feet of cord and I've put an Anderson plug on the end of it. So the Anderson plug simply plugs into an outlet that I have on board the vehicle here. Um, you put this sump pump into your body of water and it will, uh, it uses, a, it says on here anyways, it says five amps, it'll pull 230 feet uh, upwards. So it's a pretty powerful pump and I've tested it uh, on the road probably only to about maybe 50 or 60 feet away uh, and it's worked flawlessly and it pumps about uh, let's see here it says it pumps about three to four gallons a minute and that sounds about right so you can kind of imagine based on an 80 gallon tank how long that's going to take not, not too long so in any case that's the second way of filling the tank with my submersible pump the other way i have you know a third or fourth way um, sort of rudimentary if you will but I can obviously take a container from somewhere else, go get the water, source it, and dump it into the tank. And last not, not but not least, if I'm in a um, campground that has a hookup, um, I can hook up directly to a campground hookup with a hose and feed that directly into either A, the truck, or as I'm about to show you over on the trailer side, I can go directly into the trailer. So those are all the means of capturing the water. While we're talking about uh, hoses and hooking up to either a campground or drawing from somewhere else, uh, one of the things I carry, and do yourself a favor and save space and weight, made in America, this is uh, in my case a key hose. Um, it's pretty much similar to what you would see on a fire engine, it's a fire hose, and you can see I can wrap this thing up. Um, I have them in 50 foot lengths 
and they don't take up any space uh, really at all. So definitely invest in that, well worth it. All right, so once you got the water in the tank, obviously the next step is getting the water to where you want it to go, right? Um, in my case, let's start talking about the Unimog side of things. So I have put a system in on board this truck, um, and maybe it's my sort of pilot aviation background, but I have sort of redundant components, meaning that I have a hot water system on board the Unimog, and I have a hot water system that I'm going to be showing you on board the trailer. So in the case of one failing, I always have the backup to go to the other. It also comes in handy. Um, there's a shower on board the truck. We use that oftentimes after a cycling event or something in a parking lot where people can get done with uh, the ride and you know use the shower behind the truck. Makes it easy. Um, whereas, obviously, I have a full shower, which I'm going to show you inside the trailer, and that's what I would use on a day-to-day -day basis as I travel around the world. So, coming out of the tank, uh, step one is going to go through what I'm going to call a pre-filter. Now, this is a pretty much a, a home filter um, that takes out all the sediment, particles, um, anything that's going to be in the water, minus, obviously, bacteria. Um, and that is uh, upstream of the pump. So the particulates and whatnot that could be in the water are not going to hit the pump. And that's important, obviously, uh, so that you don't have any kind of pump failures. And we're going to be talking a little bit about pumps uh, in a minute here. And uh, I've had my share of that, so we'll get into that in a second. So you can see right there, that is the uh, pre-filter. And the water comes out right here, is sucked out of the, the main tank comes through this and then comes up. Now, you'll see that um, inside here, inside the truck, you'll see a bunch of PEX uh, piping. And I've chosen to use PEX for a couple reasons. The system is based on a pump that is, uh, is a pressure pump. It's an on-demand pump. And what that means is, um, is that the pump turns on and off based on the pressure uh, between a certain range. And why it's important to not use the rubber hosing that I used to use is that that had a lot of flexibility in it. And what I noticed is that, that it was not efficient for the pump. And the pump was running too much. So the PEX comes in nice. It's pretty easy to install. Um, you need a couple tools to do it. Um, the other thing is it uh, handles uh, freezing a lot better. Uh, it tends not to uh, burst like a, a metal pipe would. And... Uh, the other thing is that it's, um, you know, it doesn't flex, so it's, uh, it's pretty rigid, uh, rigid and it's pretty rugged as well. So those are the reasons that I kind of went with PEX, so you can see that. So after the water comes out of the tank and goes through that pre-filter, uh, what you're seeing now, hopefully you can see the lighting is a little bit uh, sketchy here, but uh, this is the pump on board the Unimog. It is a 24-volt, uh, 3 gallons a minute uh, shore flow pump. And it doesn't use a lot of power. Uh, it, 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 like I said before, it's an on-demand pump, so it senses um, when you're uh, requesting water, and then it'll, it'll burst uh, dependent upon how much water you're uh, taking out. And then from the pump, the water runs through this accumulator tank, and what that does, as I set a pressure, which is about 15 psi lower than the uh, pump. Uh, max pressure cutoff, which on this particular one is about 45 PSI. So this is set at 30 PSI. And what that does is it kind of makes the pump work a little bit less. Um, and, but you can see from there it runs up and it divides out. One, uh, one hose here, the PEX, goes down to the on-demand hot water heater and the other one goes to the back and stays cold. So I'm going to show you where those run to uh, right now. So here is the hot water heater. This is a camp tech unit. Uh, it has some adjustments for winter and summer and the flame height uh, and the, uh, the water uh, temperature control. I found that basically you, you get them set where you want to and there isn't a whole lot of play on that. But in any case, that is what produces my hot water. This runs on propane. Uh, it fires uh, from a D uh, battery. Um, and I find the battery lasts, you know, probably six months or so. So it's it's not something that you're changing very often. All right, so you can see that this plugs into the side of the truck. This is a regular garden hose. It's got uh, different settings for, you know, streaming and whatever. 
Um, you can hear probably in the background, the pump is on right now. And if you listen to that, it's turning on and off because it's basically regulating itself based on how much water I'm asking for. And that just plugs right into the side here. When I obviously move the truck, I just unscrews here and I put a cap on it. The other source of water on the truck is the shower system. On the rear here, you can see the shower head. This is the shower. It works just like it does in, any, in your house. And you turn it on and we have a shower and it becomes out nice and hot. Now I mentioned earlier that the water tank is on board the Unimog. And much of my water demand is on board the Overland Expedition trailer. So how does it get from the truck to the trailer? Well, that's pretty simple. I have an outlet here on the Unimog. And basically we screw a hose on here. Uh, the hose is a special hose where I have, it's uh, got two female sides. And the hose is about mm, eight feet long and that runs over to the trailer. So the water is coming from the tank on board the Unimog going to the trailer. Now, that's one way of putting water into the trailer. If I'm at a campground, as I talked about earlier, I can plug directly into the trailer from a campground hookup or a residential house or, or anywhere else um, and draw the water directly from that source. Uh, as well as I can also uh, put that uh, submersible pump into a stream and pump it directly into the trailer as well. And there's a pre-filter on board the trailer uh, so that in the event that I'm not running through the truck, it's still being pre-filtered like it would be on the truck. And right there is where that eight foot hose, you can see the hose running across from the Unimog and it runs up here into the trailer and that's where it connects. All right, we are now looking at the Overland Expedition trailer. And this is kind of what I kind of affectionately call my wall of technology. Uh, and people ask me occasionally, hey Mike, how come you got all this stuff like sort of mounted uh, behind the roll up door on the front of the trailer? And my quick and easy answer is, incredibly easy access to work on if anything goes wrong. Um, I can get to it from outside, I can easily see everything. Um, and all of my electronics and shower and filters and pump and everything is located right here. So for today, obviously we're talking about water and I'm gonna show you kind of what, how the, uh, the flow, if you will, goes once the water enters from the Unimog to the trailer, what happens to it at that point. So exactly as I showed you on the truck, you're now looking at the setup inside the trailer. And you can see, once again, we have a SureFlow pump. It's uh, three gallons a minute. It's a 24 volt system, uh, which is what my entire truck and trailer are. Um, it runs uh, up from here through this PEX tubing. Um, this little unit right here is a little bit unique. Um, it measures my flow. So it basically has an impeller in there and it measures how much water is flowing through. So if I use just the shower and the water system on board the trailer, I can tell how much of the 80 gallons on board the truck I'm using. It then goes through this strainer, and you can see right here, I'll get the camera in there. This is the filter, and it runs through the pump. The pump pumps it along here, goes into this expansion tank right here, which once again is set at 30 PSI. And then it runs up from there, and you can see it splits off. And once again, we have a Camp Tech uh, instant hot water heater that runs on propane. And from here, I'm going to show you inside, but it goes to both the sink and the shower. And uh, we're going to be talking about the water filtration for drinking here as well. And while I'm in here, I'm going to show you a couple other things. You'll notice that there are shutoff valves. There's a shutoff valve here going into the hot water heater. There's a shutoff valve right here that goes into the drinking water filtration system. There's a shutoff valve up here that goes up to the shower head, which is way up top there. And the reason for that is, is that I can diagnose any kind of issues, leaks, uh, air pressure problems uh, by shutting off individual parts of the system. And I found that that is the way to go. And I have had some problems, which I'm going to talk about. 
Um, but I would highly recommend if you're building out a system as I did here, that you put in a bunch of uh, valves so that you can isolate different parts of the system. All right, so now let's go inside the uh, bathroom, inside the trailer, and I'm gonna show you where the water comes out and what that looks like. All right, here's our bathroom. And you can see down here is the sink. Uh, we got cold and hot. And we got the regular shower set up here and a big rain shower on the top. And that's what that looks like. All right, so you can turn the water on right here. That's hot. You can see the pump is bursting. Turn on the cold water. So we got hot and cold running. You'll notice that the pump is running right now and it probably will stop as it builds up pressure. And there it goes. And it starts again. I have sliding uh, things here to keep it. So this is considered to be a, uh, a dry shower, meaning that it's the toilet is separated from the shower. But you can see when I uh, flick this on and there's the water coming out of the shower head and I sure wish that you could feel warmth but that is nice and toasty warm now the other critical component to um, my water system is drinking water and I haven't talked too much about that but the outlet for my drinking water is right here in the bathroom and I chose to put all of my water on board the trailer um, I chose to put it all in the bathroom for obvious reasons, um, just to keep the, the, the wet and the water out of the rest of the trailer. So this right here, when I turn this on, I'm going to zoom in on here a little bit. To so turn this on, you'll see this blue ring light up. And that means that it is filtering the water. So this water that's coming out here, in theory, and there's the pump, click kicking on, uh, can be pretty much drunk out of just about anything. Now I have taken it out of streams and things uh, in North America. Haven't tried sucking it out of uh, some kind of nasty swamp in Africa yet, but we'll see. Um, but basically I'm gonna show you on the outside of here how it filters this water. And you can see this unit right here that says Akuva on it. And this system right here is a UV light LED light treatment for the water. And what that does is kills any bacteria uh, that's in the water. So it's supposed to be 99.9% .9 efficient at that. So what happens is the water for drinking, and let me back the camera up here a little bit. The water for drinking comes off of the system, uh, it runs through obviously the pump and everything else, but then goes through a Pentec um, micro filter here um, that's mounted on the wall. So that's gonna take out any kind of, the rest of any small sediment that's in there as well as any kind of off flavors that's being picked up on the water from anywhere else. It then runs through this UV light system to kill any kind of bacteria in the water as well. And then that runs back into that bathroom where you can see. So as long as that blue light is on, the LED light in the bathroom, that's an indicator that uh, my water, my drinking water is safe uh, and available to drink. So that's where I draw any water that I'm going to drink directly without um, boiling it because obviously you can also boil um, uh, water in camp, um, you know, to treat anything else if you're like, I make a iced tea as an example. So that water I don't run necessarily through this filter because it's being boiled anyways. All right, so as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, um, I have had a couple challenges with this system and I want to uh, bring those to light so that you guys uh, can benefit from my experience and not have to go through the same stuff that I did. You'll see behind me, and, and trust me, I don't normally say negative things, especially particularly here on YouTube, but um, I had this Seaflow pump and this Seaflow uh, accumulator on board the Expedition trailer. And I've been on the road now for the better part of four months or so. So I'm using this stuff on a daily basis. Um, I will tell you that this pump uh, has failed on at least seven occasions. Now, in fairness, I will tell you that the people at Seaflow have been 
awesome. Their customer service has been great. I've called them up. I said, you know, guys, this the same thing keeps happening. This, uh, you can see on the front of the pump here, this is the switch. So this is where the electric component goes in. This switch keeps frying. And, you know, when I talk to them on the phone, they say, well, let me send you out a couple switches. So in total, I've been sent maybe about a dozen switches. Obviously, there's an issue. <laughs> uh, it's not my setup here. Um, and I finally got tired of it and I've switched to the SureFlow pump that is in there now. And I will tell you, the SureFlow pump that's on the Unimog has been installed on the back of this thing for the better part of 10 or a dozen years, and I've not had any issues with that. Um, this accumulator from SeaFlow as well I took out um, because I've discovered what was happening is now right now behind me, the pump is on. Um, there's a switch inside, electrical switch up top here that I can cut the power to the pump if I want. Now, I've just left it on and I'm leaving it on and you don't hear it bursting at all. The reason for that is, is because there's no water being called for, right? There's no demand. What was happening with the old pump and the accumulator here was I'd be sitting here working inside the trailer on the computer or something on here behind me. Eh. Eh. You know, maybe every 20 seconds, sometimes every couple minutes. Well, that's telling me that it's asking for water or the pressure's dropping. So anyways, I found that I was either le losing pressure through this accumulator or through the pump. And process of elimination, uh, spent a lot of time trying to diagnose the system. Long and short of it is, I took those out, put the sure flow in, no problems whatsoever. So be careful. It is nice and orange and looks nice and modern. And um, I got to tell you, it just didn't work for me. So that's my experience. One of the other things I want to address too is I get asked, what's my water usage like on the road? Because I think that's a, a topic of discussion. Um, obviously, there's a lot of systems out there that you can go with all the way from, you know, solar showers on the side of your truck to uh, more of an elaborate system like I have. When it comes down to it, it says how much water can you carry and how much do you use? So I did a test the other day. Um, it takes me about six minutes and 30 seconds uh, running a full-on shower to go through five gallons of water. So if you do the math on that, I, I happen to be able to, with the Unimog, carry, you know, 80-something gallons of water. So that's, that's a quite a bit. Um, I will tell you, I very rarely take a six and a half minute shower. More than likely, uh, it's probably about three minutes. So I'm probably only using maybe three gallons of water for a shower. I use very little water in the sink. You know, you brush your teeth at night, in the morning, whatever. Um, I do use the water to fill pots and pans, to clean dishes, uh, for cooking, to boil water, to make pasta, etc. So that's kind of what my water usage looks like. You certainly could get away with a lot less than 80 gallons because remember 80 gallons is, you know, you're looking at 550, 600 pounds of water on board the Unimog. Um, that's a lot. And as I've discussed many other times, weight is the enemy, right? So the least amount of water you can use and the more efficient you can be, the better. I have found that these pumps at three gallons a minute are not working to capacity. So they're probably um, limited by my, you know, the shower head and the sink and everything else and how much you turn it on. So I'm, pr I'm, I'm probably accurate, more accurately running at about a gallon and a half to two gallons, maybe a minute. Um, so that's kind of my water uses, and that's something that you'll have to figure out what you're going to use for water. One of the other things I'd mention um, is my hot water system obviously is being fueled by propane. Now, I've been asked a number of times, why propane? Um, the quick answer to that is I didn't want to use propane. Um, the truck is diesel. And I originally had set out to build the trailer and, and run the truck on diesel uh, entirely. For, and there's three components that go into that, is, is making hot water, heating, and cooking. Now, the Unimog has a diesel, uh, auxiliary diesel heater in it um, that runs, uh, that can heat the cab actually, and the battery box and whatnot when the truck isn't even running. So, and that's kind of what I wanted to put into the Overland Expedition trailer. 
At the end, I decided against it, um, primarily for the heating because I went with a Propex heater and I'm gonna be talking about the heating system in another video, but um, propane is more efficient and cleaner and requires a lot less maintenance on the systems. Um, that's also true of the cooking components. So, the long and short of it is, I ended up using propane as well, since I was gonna carry it anyways, for the hot water shower system. It works great. Um, it is incredibly efficient, meaning that um, the instant on demand eliminates the need to keep hot water in a tank. And as soon as you keep hot water in a tank, you're using energy because it's losing temperature, right? So you're always firing up something to keep it warm. It also obviously creates more weight wherever that tank is gonna be held. So the on-demand hot water heaters are great. The downside with propane is A, um, there's always gonna be some kind of safety concern with propane in, in tanks. I happen to carry um, a couple 20 gallon um, propane, 20 pound propane tanks. Other issue obviously with propane is shipping it. Uh, internationally can be a challenge. Uh, many carriers do not want propane tanks on board. Um, and then furthermore, when traveling internationally, like everything else, the fittings are different. So filling tanks and the availability of propane might be challenging. Right now, uh, being still in North America, it's not an issue for me. Um, I will tell you that the, both the heater on board and the shower system use very little propane. Um, I've been running for three months on the same 20 pound tank. So um, I don't know what my range is going to be for how long I can go without filling tanks up, but it's considerable. So that's sort of the rough run through of what I describe as my water system on board the Mercedes Unimog and Overland Expedition trailer. And that is one of the components involved in uh, van life or overlanding or full-time RVing on the road, or even for some of you that are just going out for the weekend uh, and want a nice setup on your rig. Water is important, and to me, you could probably tell from watching the video that shower is extremely important. And I, I, I can't overemphasize, especially if you're gonna be on the road for any length of time, you have to be comfortable. Um, if you're not comfortable, things like you know a nice bed, uh, a warm environment that you can get to that's dry when it's raining out. Um, and for me, a hot water shower is a big deal. So um, you can see I have a hot water shower in the trailer and I got one on the truck. So I've got some replication there. Um, clean drinking water that is not gonna make you sick is extremely important. I'm gonna leave all the links to the components of the system, the Akuva uh, UV treatment uh, for the water, um, the pumps and everything else. I'll leave that down below uh, in the description of this video. And um, don't hesitate to contact me at any point uh, through any kind of social media or below. I'd be happy to answer questions about my systems. Uh, coming, going forward, I'm gonna be talking about electric. I'm gonna be talking about my solar systems. I'm gonna be talking about uh, my cooking setup and a lot of other things right here on this channel. So stay tuned and um, thanks for watching and we'll see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the truck and tree symbol to your right. Once again, thanks and hope to see you soon.